Hi, man of family. Today's lesson, amazingly enough, is about a prophet named Hosea who married a prostitute named Gomer. Hosea's name means salvation, and he was active as God's prophet in northern Israel from about 753 to about 710 BC. At that time, Israel was economically extremely prosperous, but spiritually they were bankrupt. Social injustice was rampant. Idol worship was everywhere. Uh, Sexual promiscuity and immorality was just ubiquitous. Sounds a lot like today in some cases. Jeroboam was the king, and he reigned for a number of decades. When he died in 753, anarchy prevailed. As a matter of fact, between 753 and 722, a period of less than 30 years, Israel had six kings, four of whom were assassinated. And you think we live in uncertain times today. Well, during this period of spiritual bankruptcy, God called Hosea the prophet to do something that has never been asked of before in the Bible. Hosea 1-2 tells us the story. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take to yourself a wife of harlotry, and have children of harlotry, for the land commits flagrant harlotry, forsaking the Lord. Imagine that you're Hosea, and these are the very first words you hear from God. How would you respond to that? God wants to use Hosea's marriage as an illustration and a dramatization of his relationship with Israel. Gomer represents faithless Israel, who's committing adultery, and Hosea, of course, represents faithful God. It's very likely that Gomer was not a prostitute at the time of their marriage, but turned to prostitution after their their marriage. So in the Bible, adultery is always a picture of spiritual unfaithfulness and spiritual adultery with God. At this point in time, instead of worshiping God alone, Israel is filled with idols and they're worshiping uh, a lot of things besides the Lord alone. They've certainly have violated the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. Remember, anything in your life that you value more than God is an idol. So the theme of this book is God's loyal love for Israel. It's about forgiveness. It's about restoration. Uh, it's about brokenness that God's love is stronger than and overcomes the human tendency, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. That was Gomer, and sad to say, that's us. But God's love is greater. Now, as hard as this command have been, Hosea obeyed it. Verse 3, so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Now, ultimately, Gomer had three children. And God named all three children to illustrate his attitude toward Israel. Their first child was a son named Jezreel, and Jezreel means God will scatter. And that indicated that God's intention was to scatter Israel at the Assyrian invasion coming up. Child number two was a daughter named Lo-Ruhama, and it means she who is unloved or unpitied. Now, God's love is unconditional, but at this point in time, he's going to withhold mercy from Israel and discipline them with justice in order to bring them back to himself. And the third son was named Loami, which literally means not my people. This was a divorce decree where God is saying, you are no longer my people and I am not your God. This is what a husband would do and turn his back on his unfaithful wife. The good news is is that God's rejection of Israel is not the end of the story. In chapter 3, verse 1, the Lord said to Hosea again, Go again, love a woman who is loved by her husband, and yet an adulteress. Even as the Lord loves the sons of Israel, even though they turn to other gods and love raisin cakes. So I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and a homer and a half of barley. Then I said to her, you shall stay with me for many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So I will also be toward you. So Gomer's adultery had broken their relationship and they were separated. In order for Hosea to restore the relationship, 
he had to understand that Gomer had become the legal property of someone else who had hired her out to be a temple prostitute. So Hosea had to go into the slave market and literally buy his ex-wife out of slavery, which he did for about 30 pieces of silver, which was the common price of a common slave at that period of time. So he went to the slave auction and bought her back and brought her back home. And they lived in the same home, but they lived celibate lives for a period of time. Clearly, it illustrates that trust takes time to restore, even though forgiveness is immediate. Like Hosea loved Gomer, even when she was unlovely, God loves us, even when we break our relationship with him through our disobedience. You know, every single one of us at one point in time or another has walked away from the Lord. And Jesus Christ, when he saved us, went into the slave market of sin and bought us back with his precious blood. Romans 5, 8 said, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is an example, this story of God's radical love, but it's also a story of radical obedience that Hosea was willing to do what God commanded him to do regardless of price. Jesus went to the cross out of obedience to his father and out of love for us. And we should go and do likewise. We have the Holy Spirit who will empower us to love like Jesus loved and obey like Jesus obeyed. Remember, God designed us to do life together.